Liu, CEO of the Brunei Economic Development Board. Dr. Noor Rahman, CEO of Ghanaian International. Dr. Muhammad Hisham Haji Jafar, Executive Director and Medical Director of Jerudum Park Medical Center. Dr. Sabrina Datudao, Deputy Director of Global Relations, University Brunei Darussalam. We are also honored today by the presence of Datu Dr. Aminu Abdullah, Brunei's Deputy Minister of Finance. I would now like to invite Mr. Sun Lu, our Chief Executive Officer of the Brunei Economic Development Board. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Fast, can I borrow your. This is more natural to speak in, in microphone. Um, thank you, our friends, for being here. Uh, let me start by um, thank you, Your Excellency, uh, Yang Mulia, Dr. Dr. Amin Liu, uh, our Deputy Finance Minister for being here today. Um, most importantly, he's also my boss. <laughs> um, distinguished CEOs, distinguished friends of Brunei, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. I think today is very special. This is Brunei very first uh, country presentation at AIM and I think this is one of our very first uh, roadshow anywhere in the world so this is um, so thank you I want to give all of you a big round for being here today thank you now uh, let me start by asking a, a very real question how many of you have been to Brunei okay, how many of you have not been to Brunei you see my friend that's the problem um, Brunei have direct flight from Dubai every day. Uh, come by no excuse. We fly to Singapore three times a year. Um, so as well, uh, K no, not years, a day, a day. Um, KL uh, three times as well, and daily flight to all the major cities in Southeast Asia. Now, the, I guess the key thing you have to know about Brunei is we are in the middle of Southeast Asia. Now, Southeast Asia is a place that is not mentioned a lot. Uh, Southeast Asia has 600 million people, about 10% of Brunei population. And anyone know what's the size of Brunei? No? Okay, never been to Brunei, right? So must fly to Brunei. Um, Brunei is the size of Dubai. Um, almost the same as Dubai, um, except we have a lot less people. We've been an uh, oil economy like Dubai as well. Uh, at one point, Brunei was the fourth, enjoyed the fourth highest GDP per, per capita of the world. So very, very affluent. Um, and obviously, we are trying to diversify away from our oil and gas. So the interesting thing about Brunei is that we're just starting on that journey. So we like to invite all of us to think and brainstorm and please come to Brunei to see how we can really make use of the Brunei opportunity. So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about where Brunei is. Uh, later on, a few of my colleagues will talk about some of the industry. And then after that, we have Q&A. We'd love to, to come and talk to you guys for, over the next two days. We have a booth uh, just right at the corner here. So come and visit us uh, in Brunei booth. So Brunei, we are in the middle of Southeast Asia, as we say, 600 million people. Uh, growth rate, OK, 4.5 to 5% this year and over the next few years which in the world economy right now, which is quite good. So a lot of FDI is coming into South Asia. And the interesting thing about Brunei is, is in the middle of that. So area, which is the fifth largest market in the world. So if you combine the whole of South Asia, about 600 million people, fifth largest economy. And Brunei is right in the middle of that. So if we take a two hour flight radius from Brunei, you reach 60% of the population of Southeast Asia. And if you take a three hour flight, you hit the whole of Southeast Asia, including Hong Kong. And four hours, we hit uh, Seoul and Shanghai as well, and part of Australia. So very, very centrally located. Singapore, which we all know, uh, quite phenomenal by itself, which is 
sharing the same currency with Brunei for the last 50 years. Uh, it's a phenomenon by itself. However, historically, Brunei has been the major logistic hub of Southeast Asia a long, long time ago. So we've, um, you know, as we enter into the 21st century, we want to grow Brunei, similar to what Dubai has embarked on for the last you know, 15, 20 years, except that we're very early on that journey. Uh, so we'd like to invite you to join us. Now, Brunei has been an investor around the world, some of you might, might, might know. Um, we have invested in some of the, the best hotels uh, around the world, uh, some of the best real estate. Uh, we run one of the major sovereign funds. So we love to, to combine uh, such that we can invest, not necessarily just in Brunei, but in the whole of Southeast Asia uh, with us. So I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Brunei. So, Brunei is very green. 75% forest, most of which is a uh, virgin forest. So we want to say Brunei is a very safe place to live in. 59% um, of the land will never be locked down in the history because this has been legislation that we, we maintain the forest. Um, what's interesting about Brunei is it's the number one most biodiversified forest in the entire world. So if you look at the bottom statistic there, uh, Borneo, which is the island that Brunei is in, although it accounts only for 1% of the world's land, but it has 6% of the world's um, plants, um, animals, uh, insects, etc. So a lot of things yet to be explored in Brunei. So if you come to Brunei, you see peaceful, peaceful land. And, and that's a joke uh, running in Brunei. Uh, let me tell you that so that we can put it in contact with it. Uh, Brunei have about half a million population, um, meaning that people care for each other. Very stable country. The same rulers for the last 500 years. Uh, we have the first big FDI into Brunei is really Shell uh, International. Shell has been with Brunei for a centuries. And that has not changed for the last centuries. Mitsubishi, which is another big player that we have from Japan, have been in Brunei for 50 years. So quarter of a uh, half of a century and that partnership is stable. So in terms of the political stability of FDI, it's there and it has been proven over time. And here's the jokes about do we care for each other. Now I used to teach uh, a, a small class uh, in a nearby country with about cities, about five million population. And we want to run a social experiment. So we went out to the street and we pretend with my, me and my student that we're being attacked. Help, help. So guess, when they were a troop of people coming to us, guess what they did? They moved away, you know, pretending that didn't happen. I want to let you know that in Brunei, that would never happen. Uh, people will help you, and most importantly, by the time you go home, your parents will probably know where you have been. We have WhatsApp picture of where, where you are. So very, very safe place. Um, that's, that's the key point about Brunei. So very green, very safe. Um, we are a friendly Muslim uh, nation. Uh, we are uh, partners of quite a few world-class organizations, all the way from WTO, United Nations, of course, APEC, uh, and ASEAN. We have trade agreement with over 24 countries, and most importantly, our trade agreements cover three billion of the world's populations. Uh, some facts that normally we don't talk about, uh, because we don't need to, because it's oil. Um, but I think one of the key important things to know is that if you set up plants in Brunei, not only you get access to the 600 million population in Southeast Asia, but you get access uh, to the rest. And we're very early on, on that journey. And we're fortunate to strike such agreements with Brunei reputation around the world has been quite good, but we were yet to make use of, of that as we speak. Um, Bruneian are very educated. We are the third most educated nation in the whole of Southeast Asia. Um, English as a language is, is very well. We grew up with BBC and CNN. Um, and um, we speak multiple, multiple languages in Brunei. English is one, but the main national language is Bahasa. And as you know, Bahasa is a language that's spoken in Indonesia as well as Malaysia. So with Bahasa, we cover about half of Southeast Asia. So plus English, we cover, in, in terms of language, most of Southeast Asia. So we like to see ourselves really at the middle of, of Southeast Asia and a lot of good business to be, to be done there. 75% of the, the working population there are in the age of, of working. So 
very well prepared skill uh, labor force. Um, of course, more need to be done, so we welcome you to come and join us. And in terms of the Facebook penetration, um, we are the number one in Asia. Uh, slightly dated, uh, because now it's no longer Facebook, it's Instagram, Twitter and the like. So very, very much uh, internet savvy and tech savvy uh, population is in Brunei. In terms of the tax regime, uh, we enjoy 18.5% corporate tax, which is the second lowest in the whole of Southeast Asia, just right after Singapore. However, we have 0% personal income tax, 0% payroll tax, no GST, uh, and 0% capital gain tax. So we're do, still doing the calculation. We think that if we include the whole of the taxes, we are the lowest tax in the whole of Southeast Asia. So something to be uh, taken uh, advantage of. And our um, Deputy Minister just recently signed a 3.5, uh, billion dollar FDI into Brunei. Um, so we're very, very excited uh, about that happening uh, right now. So definitely something uh, to be taken advantage of. So in terms of, of the standard of living in Brunei, it's quite high. Uh, maybe not as, as well built up as Dubai, but in general quite high. Um, snapshot, you will see some of the um, the hotel, some of the, the tourist place in Brunei. Uh, again, you know, this is something that is yet to be built up, so we are working on building that up, and we welcome you to come and build up this with us. But in short, um, you know, very known for the good standard of living in Brunei. Uh, it used to be very high cost of, of living, uh, but now with the, with the lowering oil price, it's affordable. Uh, we are benchmarking south of Singapore. Singapore, as you know, four year running in a row is the most expensive city in the world. So we are south of that. So we think that we are a very good place to do business with. We are serious about our embarking on a pro business journey. For two years in a row, we are the most improved ease of doing business in the world, according to the World Bank report. So thank you. Some, something you should know about Brunei uh, in terms of foreign ownership allow 100% uh, foreign ownership. Obviously, oil and gas, as we know, are slightly protected. Um, construction industry is slightly protected. But apart from that, uh, most of the other industry uh, in Brunei is actually quite open. So we welcome you to come into Brunei and, and do business with us. Infrastructure, road for years, uh, it has been there. Uh, right now, uh, there's a highway run through the whole of Brunei already. Uh, water, as always, is, is been there. Electricity is quite affordable in Brunei, knowing that we are an oil-based country. Uh, very affordable. And our, our FDI, which I'll talk about, is fast track. Texas, if you come and join us on certain industry, I will share with you a little bit what industry. Five-year tax um, uh, exemption. And in a lot of cases, we can talk up to 11, tax, 11 years of tax exemption. So again, this is case by case, depending on how attractive uh, is the business proposition that we have here. Uh, many, many MNC, international firm in Brunei, some of which has been with us for years, and this is just a small snapshot of the company that have been in Brunei. Um, KPMG, Ernst Young, PwC, Deloitte, all those are in Brunei, uh, very much present. So we have 30 industry sites, uh, some of which are fully built up for, for us to come and build plants in Brunei for Southeast Asia already. And around Brunei is a lot of natural resources. So recently we have a, a company from Turkey, for example, uh, come into Brunei and use the palm oil from Malaysia to move that into Brunei and make it into margarine. And with that, we export to the rest of Southeast Asia. So a lot of different interesting case studies is being built in Brunei right now. Uh, fast track, from beginning to end, if the business case is very solid, uh, we can be looking at two months, if not less, of getting an FDI approved, provided this is very advanced, provided this is very uh, quality. So Brunei Economy Development Board, which I represent, is, is the gateway uh, for FDI into Brunei. So, um, Brunei, as you know, small, so we work with the rest of the government to provide you that comfort in order for you to invest in Brunei. So one stop, uh, not stop, one start shop uh, in Brunei. 
and within two months, the proposal will reach the FDI steering form, which will consist of the minister letter, which we can then make the decisions. So we don't have a lot of back and forth. You know, we make our decision quite quick and firm uh, for this. And our deputy finance minister here is, is right in the middle of that. So if you have any question about the certainty of the FDI, you are welcome to come and, and, and talk to us. Here are the five clusters that we thought are uh, most of priority in Brunei, and we we'll talked a little bit about it. The first is Hala. I think Dr. Noel in the mid to we'll talk a little bit about, about Hala. Um, we love to eat, so Hala food is big, uh, but also Hala, Hala cosmetic and Hala pharmaceutical. Uh, about half of Southeast Asia is, Islam, is Islamic, and so it's around the region. So we want to target that as, a, as an industry. Business services is interesting. Um, BPO is something that we are looking at, uh, mostly for the financial industry. As we know, um, there's a lot of uh, fund managed with different resources in Brunei. And we, what we want to do is to build out um, back end uh, for those financing. Uh, we, we just have a proposal from one of the major uh, custodian banks in the world to build a, a, a financial center uh, in Brunei as well. So that's, that's that. Uh, logistic uh, is key uh, for us. Technology and creative. We do not yet have a big data center in Brunei. Uh, so the government have, have run its own, but not in a big commercial way. Uh, Brunei have no natural disasters in the history. No earthquake. I know it's, 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 it's absurd. No earthquake, no typhoon, uh, no tsunami uh, in the entire history. So we thought this can be a really good data center uh, in Brunei. So, um, we thought that after Singapore, Brunei could be the second good place to build our data center uh, in Brunei. And once we have that, we like to be out the Internet of Things, uh, banging on the fact that we have very high skill uh, uh, um, workforces in Brunei as well. So that's the technology and the creative industry. Tourism, this is something that we should start building up on. So we welcome you to come and build up your first in tourism as well. Uh, downstream oil and gas quite mature in Brunei in terms of exploration, but in terms of the, all the downstream and petrol chemical refinery, we are quite early on that journey, so we welcome uh, you to join us on, on that as well. Again, a little bit more details about uh, uh, Brunei. So some of the testimonials from our, some of our friends that have set up a uh, shop in Brunei. The first one is interesting, a flight simulator, very, very high-end, a company, a listed company from Canada that set up a, a flight simulator in Brunei, not to serve Brunei, but to serve uh, the surrounding nations. Uh, we have, uh, I think, pilots from South America, etc., flying to Brunei uh, for training. So again, very, very interesting thing is happening. Uh, we have uh, research being done in Brunei, Syngenic, for example. And we have a, another downstairs, that's, uh, the last one is a pharmaceutical company coming in from, from Canada. Uh, to set up shop, to set up pharmaceutical uh, plants in Brunei. Right, I think, um, why Brunei again? Very, very political stable, strategically located, very, very low tax uh, and good tax regime, and a lot of the resources is very competitive with price. It's a, it's a mouthful, you know, it's a very short time, so I want to squeeze in as much as possible. Um, a lot of incentive, as we know. Very, very friendly uh, system. Great. I think that's, that's all I have. Um, the, I think the question people will ask, if it's so good, why haven't we built up more? And I think the story which we're playing at the beginning, which is oil price has been very good. And now I think it's an exciting time for us in Brunei. Uh, we see this as a blessing that now we, don't, we can diversify away from oil yet. So we'd like you to come and uh, invest in us and explore. Um, thank you, um, and uh, I think we have three more speakers to talk about the certain selective industry in Brunei, so we'll come in. Uh, with that, uh, first we'd like to welcome Dr. No again. Dr. No is from Australia, so we decide to stay with him in Brunei to be on the Halal Thank you. Uh, Yang Bulia Dr. Paduka, um, Haji Dr. Amin Liu bin Abdullah, uh, Deputy Minister for uh, Finance, Brunei Darussalam, um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and very good morning to everyone. So, uh, I'll talk about the Brunei Ghani Bita National Corporation. We are um, here to uh, talk about our Brunei Halal Foods brand. So, uh, the uh, company the company was established by the government of Brunei and it's the Ghani International Corporation. We also set up another company in UK, manufacturing plant in UK, Birmingham, and uh, we uh, promote the Brunei Halal Foods brand. We also set up a um, BMCC company in Dubai last year. So we want to import products into Dubai and other Middle East countries. So that's Brunei Halal Foods Ami. Uh, established and owned by, 100% owned by government of Brunei. So um, the objective of setting up this organization is uh, to diversify economy, just not just depending on oil and gas. So we want to diversify economy, local business development as well. So we want to support help local SMEs to develop their business. And uh, Capitalizing on halal global, global demand on halal foods. As we know that uh, Muslim population around the world is growing and it is going to be one third to more than one third population by 2030. So the world population is growing but at the same time the halal products are not available in all different categories. So one of the objectives is to provide halal product solutions not only to the Brunei market, but to the international market. And also uh, job creation within uh, Brunei. So um, our uh, vision is to be an iconic halal brand uh, in the world that will excel through innovation and virtue. Innovation is the key word we want to use. We just don't want to come with a product. We want to innovate, differentiate, and provide halal product solutions that are not available currently in the marketplace. So our journey has been so far exciting. Uh, so established in 2009 and in 2011 we have uh, set up a incorporation company in the UK, the and um, in 2016 a new product we released in the UK market and also in uh, Brunei. Um, so we are supplying to uh, Tesco, Asda, Morrisons, and many other independent outlets within the UK. So in 2007, our um, opportunity is to grow uh, our business into international market. So we are going into uh, China, Korea, Middle East, and other uh, partnership with key distributors in different countries. We are already exporting to China. We, are, we have got a strong partner in Korea. We are also coming into Middle East. Uh, all the processes have been completed. So we'll be uh, bringing our product to our company into Dubai and supplying to our, our other Middle East countries. So uh, it's, it's exciting because it's interesting to see that, that uh, it's not just uh, not Muslims are attracted to our brand and products. Non-Muslim countries, for example, China and Korea, our, the organizations are non-Muslim, but they are interested because the products are premium, quality, convenient, and an attractive, differentiated product. So um, our values, uh, our process is stringent and accurate. So we have got a very strict process that we follow to ensure that our quality and uh, we maintain the standard and quality of our product. And our people very passionate, dedicated. We have got a very strong team, both in Brunei and also in UK. So uh, we process our food, uh, we the, uh, create our food to the team, and our products innovative and wholesome. One of the things that we want to make, make sure that our products are differentiated, innovative. Uh, I'm proud to say that we attended the Gulf Food a few weeks ago, and we and we won the. Uh, uh, best award for the uh, artisan food. So one of our products got the award in Gulf food 
thing we only launched a few months ago, but we want the uh, compete with the, about 2,000 organizations and we want the award. So um, we want to make sure that our products are differentiated. So this is our halal uh, logo. So that is under the Ministry of Religious Affairs uh, under the Brunei government. So um, we use this logo. So it is, they go through a very strict process to make, not only make sure the halal process is maintained, but also we make sure that the quality and consistency of products are maintained as well. So this is some of the pictures for, from our uh, manufacturing plant in Birmingham, UK. And that's the uh, um, award uh, that we received uh, during the Gulf Expo. And uh, just for that product, Blue Sheep Packers, as you know, probably, that Blue Sheep is uh, only available in some countries, but Brunei is the most important country that has got the uh, very tasty blue shrimp. So, out of the blue shrimp, we uh, created the blue shrimp crackers. That's going very well in uh, different countries. So, uh, our commitment towards health, we want to make sure that our products are not only differentiated, also have some health uh, benefits for our products. So, low in sugar, low in uh, fat, and, and uh, low in salt as well. The World Health Organization is working to make sure that the products are healthy. So we are aligned with, with the uh, World Health Organization's recent initiative, and we, we are making sure that our products have low sugar level, low uh, fat level, and low salt level. So some of these products, have, out of many hundred products, our products have been selected uh, as the um, health beneficial products uh, in Brunei. So we are also working with the other countries like Singapore uh, for the healthiest choice logo. So we have got uh, health benefits for, we are not only bringing in products into the market, we want to make sure that consumer's health is also looked after through our products. Obviously we want to be commercial, it's a commercial organization, but uh, we also keep in our mind that we uh, provide healthier product solutions. So these are some of the pictures from our product. They are very innovative and uh, we are getting a lot of interest for our product, not only from um, Asian market, but for, from Middle East and European market as well. Our products will be going into many different countries around the world. So uh, these are some of the innovative products and differentiated. As you can see, the Provia is this, uh, a solution alternative for, for sugar. So it's a natural, all natural product. So this is a sugar replacement. The next one, Pembia, is the replacement for creamer, but it's also low fat. And the nutrition is the low sodium salt, so which is 70% reduction in uh, sodium content. As we know that sodium is the cause of hypertension, tension, blood pressure, and all this. So this is an alternative. And we also got Super Soya, which is a soya-based product. Once again, it's a healthy product. So these are some of the products as well we are manufacturing in Brunei, and we are going to export uh, to other, other markets. So these are low, 50% um, low in sugar or no added sugar. So about 97% sugar-free uh, drinks, cordials. So this is the product blue sheet packers. This is going like hotcake. Basically, uh, as we know that uh, blue sheet is available in Brunei, we are uh, processing blue sheet, but at the same time we are using blue sheet to create these packers, which is for blue sheet packers. This is the product that has uh, got award for the innovative product. Uh, as you can see that we have got blue sheet. We will be processing fresh blue sheep and frozen blue sheep, exporting to different market. And also we have got different other products that are we are manufacturing and we will be manufacturing in Brunei and exporting to different countries. So currently, uh, we are working enough with a number of uh, organizations. So one of them is ASDA, Tesco, Morrison's. These are the organizations, uh, retail outlets in UK. 
we are supplying to their supermarket. Uh, Lulu Group, we are working with them. Very soon, we are waiting for the halal approval. But uh, the evolved uh, paper has been completed. We are hoping, inshallah, very soon, we will be bringing our product into Dubai and many uh, other, other Middle Eastern countries through Lulu. And uh, Pure Fresh is a Chinese organization. Uh, they have a uh, joint venture with Brunei government. Now we are, they are going to set up uh, under partnership with Brunei government a manufacturing process and they are taking our product. This is interesting because this is a non-Muslim country but they are also interested in halal product. So Golden Tree is another key quantum emas is the Korean company. Once again, they are interested in our product. They are taking our product into Korean markets. So um, why work with Brunei Halal Foods? So globally recognized brand. This is a premium brand and we position ourselves as premium. We maintain our quality, we maintain our consistency of our product. It's a high standard product. So uh, it's a government owned and backed by the Brunei government. As uh, Mr. Shulu mentioned, that uh, Brunei is a small country, a very clean country, and very uh, 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 environmentally friendly country. And so we are coming up with our products that we will maintain the consistency and premium quality of our products. So uh, government owned back and international network and market access. So we are already, as I mentioned, we are already into China market, we are going into Korean market, we are coming into uh, Middle Eastern market and also European market we are based and operating from Birmingham, UK. So our market access is very clear. So any investment into uh, Brunei with us will open the opportunity to go into international market this has have been already created. So if there is any question, you can communicate with us and then we can talk further. We'll be happy to take more questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now uh, uh, we would like to um, request uh, Dr. 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 Isham, who is the Managing Director of the only private uh, hospital in Brunei. Uh, Dr. will talk about the uh, hospital. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. I'm just going to briefly talk to you about our private healthcare centre and why we should go to Brunei as well as part of your health uh, needs. Yeah, World Health Organization recognized Brunei as the second base in Asia after Singapore for the healthcare service as a whole. Okay? So it's one of the unexpected treasures that everyone should know. And Jerusalem Park Center is actually, uh, as I mentioned before, is a private center wholly owned by the government. Uh, it's located on the shores of the South China Seas. And we have uh, multinationalities of uh, specialists in the institutions. And, oops, And that's our center, okay? Uh, this is the Jerusalem Park Medical Center complex, and this is the new cancer center and stroke center, okay? As you can see, it's one of the few centers in the world that's actually located along the shores of the beach, where patients can actually enjoy the serenity of the surroundings. And we are the first hospital in Brunei to be accredited by the Joint Commission International. As you know, JCI or Joint Commission International is one of the standards that we use internationally for healthcare service providing. And we are very proud of our mission and vision. As you can see, we are there to provide excellent healthcare for you. And this is some of the services that we provide in our centers. And not only that, we do help with medical evacuation. We do have some expatriates uh, uh, who wish to be sent back to their home country. And we lie closely with the SOAs or, or other uh, medevac uh, uh, areas in, in the region. And 
in our hospital itself, we have state of the art gymnasium as well, which is open to public as well. And uh, we'll show you later. And on top of that, we have uh, almost an Olympic size swimming pool with jacuzzi and steam room within the hospital. Okay? And, uh, and of course, we have the usual operating theaters and delivery suites. And this is the gym, and this is within the hospital. Okay? So uh, we have one of the uh, magnificent, what we call a million equipment in, in, in the gym as well. And there's only two in Asia. And this is the typical executive suite. Okay, each room has a balcony, and each balcony will have the view of the ocean. Okay. And this is the typical delivery suite. And on top of that, what we want to share with you is that our center did infertility treatment. And our infertility treatment is a bit different from other uh, institutions that we, we work together with uh, a company called Centrenics where the embryo will, uh, that's been collected will be selected by this uh, technique that only the good embryos are implanted. So it, therefore, it increases the success rate from 30% to almost uh, 80%. Okay? So, inshallah, so by these techniques, uh, but we don't allow sex selection. Although the techniques allow that, but we prohibit such, such, uh, such uh, yeah, uh, procedure. And also we want to share with you, if you do wish to come to Brunei, if you want to have a quick surgery to improve, your left side, you know, if you got varicose veins, we have this laser treatment, which is just a bad surgery. It's a sutureless, okay? We just make a small incision, put the laser into your leg, and make it from there to there, okay? And a few hours later, you can go home feeling much, much better about yourself. And we also like to share with the cancer center and the stroke center. This, as I've shown you earlier, is the new building. And, uh, this cancer center is uh, just been set up recently, and we have one of the newest machines in the world. There are only three of these machines in the world: one in the States, one in Portugal, and one in Brunei. It's called the H. Okay, and uh, we also have other variant uh, linear accelerator. So there are ra two radiotherapy uh, accelerators in our, our facilities. And we have the usual uh, brachytherapy and the nuclear medicine facility as well. Okay. And the radiation oncology includes uh, a comprehensive one, right from the treatment of curative to palliation. All right. And these are the other services that we uh, provide. And as I mentioned, we have the nuclear medicine facilities as well. And the only other interesting thing about our cancer center is we have one of the few female radiotherapists in the region. Okay? Most radiotherapists are male. So for breast cancer patients, they look very much forward to seeing a female ra a radiotherapist uh, for obvious reasons. Okay? This is the typical chemotherapy suites. Okay? And if you want the scenic view, you can have this view and this is your view of the ocean. But if you want in isolation or privately, you have a private room uh, where there are, uh, can be even chemotherapy privately as well. And this is the uh, garden at the seventh floor. Okay? And actually, it's the same level as the chemotherapy suite. So once you have chemotherapy, you can go out, enjoy some fresh air, and enjoy the view as well. All right? And the next one I want to talk is the stroke center. This is an affiliation with a hospital in Germany, led by uh, Dr. Uta. So this stroke center deals uh, everything from acute stroke management to surgical stroke management, such as the compressive craniectomy. So they do acute thrombolysis if they're presented with four and a half hours of uh, symptoms, uh, and they have uh, excellent success rate so far. And this uh, stroke center is also aided by telemedicine, uh, by a direct FPSG uh, line uh, to, to the hospital and stuff. So they have 24 hours access to the, sorry, to, to Germany as well. And they have highly trained uh, physiotherapists, uh, 
uh, occupational therapist and speech therapist to complement the treatment of stroke. This is a typical ICU room. We spend these huge ICU rooms, okay, and they are all single isolated rooms. And other things that they do, the rehab department is for the, apart from the stroke and spinal injury, is for the cancer patient uh, and also for other sports injury or neck pain or back pain rehab. And we have one of the, uh, what do you call this, up to date machine or high tech machine for locomat. It's like a robot where it, it minus your gravity and will assist you to walk gradually, alright? Uh, and and this is recorded, so there is a, uh, you can see that there's an objective assessment to it. So you can follow up after a few weeks how much you have done, okay? So it helps with the patient and the therapist as a whole, all right? The same thing with the, the upper limbs. And this is the whole amyl spring as well. And we have a huge hydrotherapy pool as well, uh, mainly for the stroke and sports injury patients. And uh, a simulator there as well. Basically, the rehab service is uh, serviced by a highly specialized uh, team. And not only that, we do what we call a dry needling, like a acupuncture, but the European methods of doing that uh, to help with uh, all those uh, muscle spasms, especially those in acute injury or uh, following uh, surgery. And the other center I mentioned is the cardiac center. This is a center within JPMC as well. This is an affiliation with the Parkway Pantai uh, uh, since 2002. They do everything here. From a simple diagnostic to a primary PCI to the electrophysiology treatments. Okay? And we do all open heart surgery. So we do coronary bypass, we do valve surgery, and we also do mechanical heart surgery. Okay, that is our uh, use as a destination therapy for patient who, who has a very poor heart. And so far, since we started this about two and a half years ago, we have implanted five five mechanical hearts in the line so far. Okay. And just to show you, you, despite the small number, our centers are equivalent, if not better, than some of the excellent centers around the region or in the states. Okay? If you can see the CABG, this is our rate in uh, mortality for Brunei, 1.2, and with the UK, and even compared to Singapore, we are better. Okay? And these are available online anyway for, for, for you to compare. So, we have a very dedicated team. It's like I said, despite the small volume, we managed to produce a high quality care and with very low mortality rate. And not only that, we do a rescue or salvation, uh, 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 what do you call ECMO. For example, someone who's very ill, for example, like someone suffered from a respiratory virus for the lung, which they cannot ventilate anymore, we rescue them from the government hospital and we bring them back to a clinical where they put on this ECMO machine, okay? And, <coughs> for example, you know, if they're worse off or whatever, so they'll be put in isolation for the ECMO machine. This will show you what sort of ECMO machine we use here, and this is an example of the mechanical heart we implant. This is what we call heart back 2. This is the one we implanted originally, therefore, of such implants. And now we move on towards heartbeat tree. And this is a small diagram to show how we make a hole. This is how the X-ray looks like. This is the heartbeat tree. This is the latest one, the heartbeat tree. We've been planted. So that's how the X-ray would look like in such patients. This is our first patient. This two weeks after his recovery, he's working on the bridge. And this is it now. We can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
a major role in providing that workforce. Um, just very briefly about the education system in Brunei. We have we offer a range of education, so all the way from preschool up till university level, as well as lifelong learning. Uh, we have three very top-notch international schools. One which is located right next to my university, University of Brunei Darussalam, or UBD for short. Um, we have four public universities. UBD is by far the largest and oldest in, in Brunei Darussalam. Uh, we have an engineering university. We also have a university focusing on Sharia law as well as Usul al-Din. And finally, we have a university which, makes, which aims to train the local workforce of religious teachers. Um, a brief snapshot of our university, UBD. Uh, we were established right out of the country's independence in 1984 from being a British protectorate. We are a medium-sized university, 5,000 students, of which about 19% are international. We have about 500 staff, of which 50%, around 50% are international. Um, they come from over 46 different nationalities. Um, we have eight academic faculties, eight research institutes, and two support centers. Since 2009, our university has undergone a journey of transformation, we like to call it. Uh, we revamped our undergraduate degree curriculum it's a four-year undergraduate degree program, and we renamed it the Generation Next or Gen Next degree. A very important part of this degree program, which is very innovative uh, and one of its kind in the region, is that we, in the third year, all of the undergraduates have to leave the university for one year. So they have to undergo experiential learning, and we call this the discovery year. So during that discovery year, the students can undergo any one of these four activities, which are all equally important and equally instilled um, soft skills and learning in our students. The first is a study abroad program. Uh, our students have the option to go to over 120 different partner universities across the world, spanning six continents and 29 different countries. They get to learn in, for example, Korea, Japan, as far away as Galapagos Islands in South America. Our students can also go on a community outreach program, being a very quite a rich country in Brunei. Um, our students find it very fulfilling to give back to the community in terms of teaching English, for example, in some primary schools in less well to communities. Our students can also go on an internship program um, by which they gain valuable working skills before they even enter the workforce. And increasingly important is our incubation program. Our students undergo, um, in this incubation program, for one or two semesters, they, uh, they get the opportunity to harness their entrepreneurship skills, the entrepreneurial mindset. They also get to form a company or startup even before they leave the university. In fact, um, we have one of our alumni, Vanessa Teo, who's here also for the startups. As a recognition of the commitment that UBD has placed in terms of learning outside of the classroom, we've been awarded number one in Asia in terms of student mobility. We are number one in the second year one year in terms of outbound student mobility and number two in terms of inbound student mobility. We offer a few flagship courses. Um, I believe that Dr. Isham is one of our lecturers for the Institute of Health Sciences. Uh, it's a three plus three medical program. So they spend three years in UBD and the next three years in any one of our partner medical schools across the world. So for example, we have King's College London in the UK. We have the University of Ireland in Ireland. We have Australian National University in Australia. And we also have, uh, most more recently, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. We also offer a flagship Masters of Public Policy and Management program. It's a one-year degree program, so half of the year is spent in UBD, and the other half is spent in any one of our top four partner policy schools in the US. We have Duke University, Maryland University, Georgetown, as well as University of California, Berkeley. Um, apart from just having a transformation in terms of undergraduate degree program, we're also becoming very international in UBD. Um, this is, for example, a student from King's College London. They join us on our very popular four-week summer course. It's credit-bearing. Um, we receive students from over 53 different nationalities joining the UBD. So we're becoming increasingly international. Um, in line with our National Vision 2035, UBD is increasingly focusing on becoming a research-intensive university. We recognize the importance of the university in driving research and development of the country. These are our four research niches. We have, um, as CEO Mr. Soon mentioned earlier, 75% of Brunei is covered in rainforest. 
So here in Natural Laboratory for Biodiversity Research. Uh, new discoveries are being made all the time. We have international researchers joining us all the way from Harvard, Yale, and US. And they go and do research in our field study center, which is exclusive to our university. So they have exclusive access to lots of research on biodiversity, joining our local researchers as well. We also have um, a focus on Islamic studies. UBD is a pioneering university in delivering Islamic governance in English language. We also have a very strong Institute of Asian Studies, uh, recognizing the importance of China, for example, and ASEAN, uh, especially in recent years. We also have a focus on renewable and alternative energy. So our national vision is to produce 10% energy sources from renewable energy by 2035. So we're hoping to be able to contribute to that. Uh, as a recognition of our research intensity over the past few years, we're a founding member of this international consortium of universities for biodiversity research. Uh, as you can see, some members are in US, the University, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, University of Auckland, and so forth. We are also located on the third largest island in the world, which is also a very um, thriving hotspot for biodiversity. We're a founding member of the Borneo Studies Network, consisting of 12 different universities across Borneo. So we work together on Borneo Studies research in science, arts, culture, and language. So we warmly welcome you to come and visit Brunei, as well as UBD. Please drop us a line whenever you're in the region. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, even myself is learning so much about Brunei. Truly a country with many, many treasures. Uh, we like to, uh, in a moment, bring up our Deputy Finance Minister to, uh, with some of our speakers for any Q&A. But before that, we know pictures speak a thousand words, and in this new age, videos spoke a thousand words. So I want to show you for 90 seconds uh, some of the video from Brunei, so we have a context of how this would actually look like. Finance Minister, Dr. Dr. Amin Liu, together with our other speaker to, to join us on stage for a quick Q&A. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope uh, you have a sort of a good introduction about Brunei. I uh, also start to appreciate how beautiful <laughs> Brunei is actually. Uh, if you have not visited uh, Brunei, I think many of you uh, raised your hand just now. Uh, good opportunity to uh, you know come and visit Brunei uh, and, and see what Brunei has to offer uh, both from a social point of view also from an investment angle. So I think the presentation earlier on gave you a snapshot of some of the activities that we are doing in Brunei and the opportunities to maybe collaborate with some of these entities that uh, presented their, their, their activities to you. But there are many more uh, that we didn't have the chance today to show you what we have. Uh, I'm sure if you do want to uh, make a trip to Brunei, uh, we, Brunei Economic Development Board could facilitate your visit uh, to line up the program for you. Uh, tell us what kind of specific focus that you, you like to uh, uh, focus on, and then we can line up the people for you to meet, uh, in addition to a bit of tourism. Uh, 
about the rainforest that we have and the beautiful river and how green and clean it is. From my experience uh, dealing with foreign investors over the last year or so, uh, many of them had not come to Brunei, to be honest. Uh, so when we approached them, talked to them, uh, they felt that uh, many, for many years they, they have not actually paid attention on Brunei. And when they had the opportunity to meet us, they felt that maybe you know, it's, it's a strong case for, for looking at Brunei. And then when, when they visited Brunei, and they can see how clean, how, how green, and how politically stable Brunei is, and since then, actually, we have, we have achieved a bit of a success, and we, a number of them has actually uh, decided to set up operation. I managed to uh, talk to someone from uh, Abu Dhabi, for example. He's already there doing the plan, and uh, I've spoken to someone in India. They have already started, committed themselves, Korea, uh, in China, and a few other countries as, as well. So, so I think it, it speaks for itself. In terms of, you know, if you start coming to Brunei and then you start seeing for yourself and then you're hopefully having to convince yourself about, make, you know, do, you know, do something in Brunei. Uh, so any of my sort of uh, counterparts uh, who never come to Brunei, and when they come to Brunei, they told me, keep it this way, don't change. Uh, but of course, as, uh, as any economy trying to sort of develop itself, we are committed to keep our environment as clean and green as it is today. Uh, but at the same time, we need to develop ourselves and uh, we have policies to ensure that whatever we do, we develop the country and we continue to keep with the, the, the rainforest that we have. Because the rainforest itself, as presented earlier on, provides another source of opportunity for biodiversity. The, the biodiversity. A lot of uh, universities, uh, we talking about uh, I think we also have Japanese uh, universities that conduct research in our red forest uh, that could lead to potential pharmaceutical products and, and things like that. So again, uh, many, many, many advantages of keeping your red forest. Uh, so yeah, I suppose uh, I should give opportunity for you, any one of you to, you know, to ask questions. Please. Brunei is one of the highest uh, GDP per capita income in the world. So my direct question is how much is the uh, allocation of research per GDP? Excellency, because of the uh, if learning from Singapore and Japan, and Korea, for instance, even the US, the success of the uh, this developed country, so called, as they put extra mileage of research, even as high as three percent of GDP, which is very good. Yeah. I think we do have uh, some interesting uh, research activities going on. I think uh, Dr. Sabrina mentioned about some partnership with Internet, for example. Uh, that that uh, you know, so so that is for the UK. Uh, that has led to some significant success on that. Uh, in terms of the quantum of uh, uh, investment into research and um, development, I think we need to come back to you on that number. Uh, again, through you know, being, being a small country, I think we, we obviously try to try to move into that direction as much as possible. But the other way we sort of try to approach this is by partnering with other technical partners to look into Brunei and bring that technology to Brunei and, and, and set up some operation out of Brunei that will create that win-win situation for both. So I think that, that will hopefully encourage them and speed, you know, speed up the, the kind of research activities in the country. So, question. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, you know, we are from Foundation Holdings. We invest in healthcare, education and consumer. So your presentation was very exciting for us, actually. Uh, one question. Try another one. Okay. 
Okay, this works better. Thank you. Uh, so my question was, you know, your health, your healthcare facilities, and your education. Is this for foreigners today? I mean, what percentage is local versus expats? Both the hospital and the education that you've built so far. The, the, the healthcare is open to foreigners as well. But what percentage right now is locals versus uh, healthcare tourists? We haven't really opened to tourism per se in terms of medical, so we are just starting. Got so it. now, Got since we have new facilities, there's ample space to cater for both populations in Brunei and uh, expat. So, as you can see, uh, we invested quite a lot in the equipment and the facilities. <coughs> And, and that's why Brunei was ranked number two in, a, in, in, in Asia in terms of how 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 the population enjoy good health care. Uh, so I think so we are you know so this is an opportunity that with all these facilities that we have, the, the equipment that we have, we shouldn't just you know leave it to Bru Bruneians, but we should open it up to the opportunity to the regional to the countries as well. Uh, of course, people look at Singapore also as a, as a possibility. And okay, people like to pay cost of treatment, people like to look at the environment as well. So we do believe Brunei, uh, you know, provide a different formula uh, in terms of good health care, but also the environment that you are, you, know, you, you see the treatment uh, compared to other regional countries. So thank you. And uh, on that note, I just want to tell you, health care cost is not just about the money, it's the quality of care that not going to be the result. This we, we should take care. And your current uh, doctors are all local or your expats as well? It, it's mixed. It's mixed. It's quite international. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, hello, good morning. A very interesting presentation. Uh, I've always been fascinated with Brunei, you know, because it's a small country and, you know, dependent on oil and gas. So for a, for a foreign investor, what would you say would be the three main incentives, you know, three main attractive factors coming to invest in Brunei? Being in the middle of a very exciting nation, uh, country is one. Uh, being very political stable is another one. I think the tax incentive that we mentioned, we mentioned just now uh, has been great. And I think the most important thing uh, is, the, is the stability that we, we want to give to our, our investor. Uh, the guarantee that you know, later on you can take back your interest, that your plans in Brunei are, uh, are fair. And I think I will add one more to that, and I think that the minister can add to it. And we like to co invest in lawful investment, so the government has a stake in that as well. I, I, I think many of us have been, been outside Brunei for many years uh, to, you know, for our education or work. Or, and, and we always look back at Brunei and say, you know, how, why, different, how, why Brunei is different from the others. I think the clean air, the clean environment, and, uh, and, and the cost of living is not really that very high. And uh, you know, people are friendly, family ties is very strong. And uh, so, well, good connectivity to the rest of uh, ASEAN and other, other part of the world. Uh, we fly three times to Singapore every day. We fly three or four times to Kuala Lumpur every day. We daily fly to Philippines, uh, Manila, to Jakarta, to, uh, to uh, Kota Kinabalu, uh, Bangkok, and all these places. So its connectivity, connectivity is very, very good. Uh, so again, we can talk a little bit more later on about your specific interest in, in, in Brunei. But again, as I said, you know, so people who have not visited Brunei uh, sort of might find that mistake about Brunei. So once, once you get there, maybe, you know, sometimes you get that view when you're there that, that is very hard to describe in, in words. Just come back to Dr. Sabrina, maybe do you have anything to say about this, this uh, ratio between uh, the earlier question on uh, expense and local? Hi, um, thanks for your question. Um, so I can only speak on behalf of my university. So we have, in terms of staff, 50% are expatriates and they're very high quality uh, research productive staff. Um, and in terms of students, uh, there's about 1,000 students out of 5,000 who are international. So about 20% are international. The uh, majority are from ASEAN countries, but increasingly from the Middle East as well, because we offer scholarships for research degrees. Thank you. Alright, let's have a few last questions. Yeah, yeah. So first, hello. 
So first of all, congratulations on your first roadshow. Uh, very well, uh, very good insights and presentation. I've got two questions. Is there a strategic direction that the government has specific to the healthcare and the education industry for the next five or the 10 years? Or do you have a roadmap that you envision would like to be in? And second, how do you get a visa? In terms of the healthcare, the Ministry of Health of Government is all trying to develop this three centers of excellence, especially cardiac, the heart, and the stroke center. So in the next five years, we want to be one of the main players in the region. And we invested a lot of this up and see from the buildings that we have in very briefly on education because I see people nagging us to move out now. Uh, in terms of higher education um, in Brunei, we'd like to create graduates who are not just job seekers because 60% of our workforce works for the government, but increasingly we want our students to be job creators. So we want to push them into entrepreneurship uh, to be able to create jobs for others. Uh, increasingly as well, we want to be a more research intensive university, uh, recognizing the importance of, as you say, research and driving the nation's economy. Thank you. I think at this juncture, can I maybe suggest that we have been chased out of this room? But uh, I think I'm sure if there are further questions, uh, we are we have a boat uh, out there. Uh, Bruna, you can find us all there. Uh, maybe we can talk a bit more. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's keep on.